the Freud cask strength batch number 13. Is it going to be the best one yet or is it going to be a cursed batch? Well, it would kind of make sense if this batch was a cursed batch because we have had a cursed year and a bit now, really, haven't we? Over a year now since we've been able to leave the house without threat of catching something deadly. So it would be rather fitting. Hopefully it's going to be something to cheer us up and we'll get another good one. So the Freud cask strength is 10 years old, as it always is. This is batch number 13 actually says on the bottle of this one, not sure if it did previously, that this was bottled in January 2021. So, bottled quite a long time ago, but this one has only just been released, at least where I am in the UK, and I imagine probably elsewhere. It is bottled at an ABV of 57.9%, so that's pretty strong stuff. It's not the strongest batch of cask strength we've had. That was last year's release, which was just over 60% but it's not too far off. It does actually state on the label on this one that this is a non-chill filtered whiskey and bottled at cask strength, obviously. So that's great. Thank you, Lefroig, for stating on the label where it matters, the only place that it matters, that this is a non-chill filtered whiskey. There's probably some people in the company that think that we're just a bunch of geeks whinging about nothing at all, but we really like to know when we're drinking something which is an integrity craft production, and it really matters to us. We think that it makes all the difference to your whiskey, and we really like your whiskey. But does raise the question of if they're saying on the label of this one that this is non-chill filtered, does that mean that things like this year's Karchis is not non-chill filtered, i.e. it has been chill filtered? Because as far as I can see, it doesn't say anywhere on this one. So it may be that some of their craft presentations are still being chill filtered, or it may just mean that they couldn't be bothered to put it on the label of everything, but this one at least, non-chill filtered. The other important thing is, is this a natural colour whisky? And I've had a look over the label and the tube and I can't see anything either way. There is a good sign that you can't see anything in other European languages where it's law that you have to state such things that says that it has been coloured. So I would think that it probably hasn't. But it's a little bit disappointing that they've not told us because that basically means that they're reserving the right to deceive us either now or in the future by polluting their whiskey with artificial colouring. Also notice that if you look on the, I think the back label and the tube on this one, they're still saying that strange statement that they recommend that you add twice as much water as whiskey to fully appreciate the taste characteristics. So for this whiskey in particular, which is bottled at 57.9, if you pour, say, a 30 milliliter measure and add 60 milliliters of water to that, which sounds like what it's asking you to do there, that's going to come out at around 19.3%. So it may be that that's how they think that you should drink this whiskey, but that does raise the question of why would you buy a cask strength whiskey to water it down to sort of strong wine strength? But that's just the sort of thing that makes me really dislike reading Lefroy labels. That sort of nonsense and half of the information is always missing. But let's not grumble too much because we've got Lefroy 10 year old cask strength here. And I don't think I've ever had a bottle of 10 year old Lefroy cask strength that I've been disappointed in. And I can't imagine that this one's going to be any different. So let's get some in the glass. Yet again, very tight cork from Lefroy and see what we've got. So I have tasted this before I made this video and in my opinion as with the Karchis triple wood this is perfectly drinkable at full strength if you're at all accustomed to your strong cask strength whiskies you'll be fine with this one. So 10 year old cask strength on the nose it's very syrupy and very woody there's quite 
a, there's a strong sweetness to this whiskey, but there's also quite a woodiness, more of a woodiness than I'm used to experiencing with Laphroaig at this age. Also a strong aroma of gristy vanilla peat. So if you've seen my other videos, that's something that I really like when you can really smell and taste the barley. As well as, with this being a Laphroaig, a strong aroma of antiseptic bandages, sort of TCP antiseptic dressings, that sort of thing. There's also a little slight background note of sort of spicy aniseed, aniseed sweets, that sort of thing. The real surprising thing is though, that this is quite a sweet whiskey for a Laphroaig cask strength. Laphroaig, in my opinion, is always a sweet whisky, but with this batch in particular, I definitely think it's been turned up a notch. Let's see how it tastes. So, just looking at the colour of this whisky, do you think that's natural colour? They do tend to use first fill bourbon casks at Laphroaig, and they do char their casks as well. I would say probably natural colour, but as always, would be good to know for sure. So on the palette of this one, there's quite a lot of ash. So as always with a Laphroaig, you don't get any Laphroaig that's not heavily peated. It's just what you're buying when you get a Laphroaig. But quite a lot of ash to the peat on this one. Also quite a lot of citrus and uh, quite a big note of sort of tar, tar ropes, that sort of thing. And again, as I was saying on the nose, I was getting quite a lot of woodiness. There's quite a slightly dry tannic oak quality to the palate of this whiskey, which it's not too much. It's just a little accent. It's perfectly in balance, but definitely a little bit more dry oak than I'm used to seeing on a Laphroaig. But really, the important thing is that all of that, those tannins and the dry oakiness, it's all balanced perfectly by a wonderful sweet vanilla pea and syrupy sweetness. It's going to have another sip and have a look at the finish. So the finish on this one, it's a very good finish. It's not incredibly long, but I'm going to describe it as a long finish, slightly peppery, but the most surprising thing is there's a strong maltiness to the finish of this one. More than I was getting on the palate, to be honest. But after you swallow and you're sort of experiencing the dying end of this whiskey, you can really taste the malt that's gone into this. I always think it's interesting with the Laphroaig 10-year-old cask strength. Because it's a guaranteed release, it's something that happens every year. And it's always follows a similar theme. It's first fill bourbon, 10 years old, heavily peated. You know what you're getting. They don't mess around with the casks. They don't change it up too much. So it's always interesting to sort of experience the changes that go on year by year. And I think that one of the defining characteristics of this year's batch, batch number 13, which I'm pleased to say is not cursed in any way, is that this batch does seem particularly mature. And I think that's part of the reason why with this one, I would say there's little to no point adding water at all. If you're not experienced with your strong whiskies yet, that's fine, no shame in that. But if you do like your cask strength whiskies, this one doesn't need water because it's very mature, very well rounded, very well made, and I think it's perfectly drinkable at full strength. Now, I can't say that about some of the previous batches. Some of the previous batches of the Laphroaig 10 year old cask strength, they have at times tended to run a little bit hot, a little bit too aggressive. Some of the previous batches I would recommend watering down ever so slightly, but this one, it really seems like they might have put some either slightly older stock into this one, or possibly just some really good quality casks. I actually think that this 10 year old cask strength, batch number 13, is probably the closest of, out of all of the batches that I've tried to the standard 10 year old. You get some batches of the cask strength that are more raw, more peaty, more aggressive, more salty, some are drier, but this one, it really is like the 10 year old, but at a proper strength. As for a grade, I'm going to give this one a B plus. So that's 
much better than this year's carchus, same grade as I gave to the 2019 carchus, and in my opinion B plus is very good grade. Now some people are going to mark this whiskey down because of this, they're going to say that it's a bit sanitised, it's not that aggressive, it's not special, it's not different, and they'd be right, but in my opinion that's exactly why I like it. In my opinion this batch of the cask strength is the closest thing to the basic general Laphroaig house style, if you can ever say that any distillery has its own specific style. And the, the Laphroaig house style is a style that I really like. And to me, it is important that a whiskey does, unless it's a, a special cask finish or something experimental, it's important that whiskey does adhere to some sort of house style. Because you know what you're getting, this whiskey, in my opinion, it just encapsulates the essence of what Laphroaig is all about. If I want something that's really aggressive, then I've got Ardbeg. But if I'm going to drink a Laphroaig, and if I'm going to pay for a Laphroaig, then I want that rounded vanilla sweetness from those fresh bourbon casks. But although obviously still with that big hit of peatiness, and that's exactly what this one does. So I think that's about all I've got to say about this one. It is a very good whiskey, and as always, being a 10-year-old Lafroy cask strength release, it's one that you should probably look out for. I am looking forward to hearing other people's thoughts on this one, because being that little bit gentler, I think it probably will divide people. Anyway, thanks for watching. Cheers.